Hello, class. Welcome to week three. Thank you very much for the hard work you all are doing. I know week one and week two, you guys are trying to figure out what to do, especially with the Z-Book. Some of you are having some issue with finishing the, the project and all of a sudden not seeing the actual grade in your grade book. I will say, if you're one of those facing that problem and you know you did your assignment correct, but the grade that is reflected is the wrong one, I want to encourage you to take a screenshot and then send it to me. I will see what I can do. All right. Um, I know this has been reported to our IT group, and I just want to make sure that if you have done the assignment the right way, then I'm going to review it. And if it is correct, I'm going to manually update the grade. Okay. That's something that I want to want to encourage you. And I want to let you know. But for week three, um, I know you're going to go over this. I'm going to highlight a few specific points that I want you to pay attention to, okay? So for module three right now, this is a very interesting, you know, module or domain because we, you know, you're going to be learning about decision tree or branching. And also you're going to be learning about like data types, Boolean. You're going to be talking about and learning about condition statements. You're going to learn about pseudocode and also flowchart. And those are the main things that I'm going to go over and I want to show you. Because Python is very, um, I'm not going to say tricky, but Python is very strict when it comes to variable declaration, when it comes to spacing or indexing. Like you have to know these things because otherwise, and I will show you, you will get a whole bunch of errors. So for this week, I want you to pay attention to the domain or the, the module, but also the explanation, the explanation of each of the, uh, you know, the concepts per se. For instance, decision branching, what is that and how is it used? So it is important for you to know that when we're talking about decision branching, um, basically we want to, to tell a specific section to run based on the inputs that we, that we get, but also the way we have written our program. For instance, I want, I, well, here's an example. Like Super Mario, Mario Bros, you can only go left and right, right, to make the majority of the action, right? Mario can run left and right, and to achieve this, there is a condition statement in the code. For instance, the decision branching is going to say, hey, if, you know, if H, if user H is, a, is 18, user, uh, you know, should get a driving license, or if not, user shouldn't be driving. Otherwise, no authorization should be given, or something like that. Another thing is, hey, if user um, input is is greater than ten, run this code. Otherwise, exit the program. So something simple, similar to here. It says, if left arrow key pressed, right, and then you have a comment that says Mario move left. Well, if right arrow key pressed, and then there's a comment, remember, this is a comment, the number, move Mario to the right. So th this is kind of like a statement, right, that you have in there. Now, the Boolean point, which is key, and you're going to be using it through the, to this um, module and the entire rest of the class or the course, Boolean value basically is either true or false. Is this equal to this? Yes or no. If it's yes, do this. If it's no, like break or exit the program. I want you to know conditional operators. Basically, conditions operators are equal to, greater to, the same, less than, greater than, less than or equal to, uh, not equal to. So all of these are very important and you're gonna see why. Because when we are running a program, if we are not clear like how to use this, your program will not run and you might be very confused or why. And I'm going to show you an example. So uh, Boolean statement will also be used in future modules. I already mentioned that. Uh, specifically when you are talking about loops, many times things are going to be repeated. Remember, looping. We're going to go over that when the time comes. But just keep that in mind. Make sure you learn the conditional um, operators and also that you learned the conditional statements, how it works, because this is critical in programming. And for this module and the rest, you're going to have to use it for the most part. So, um, ZBook. You have to do your ZBook for week three. And as I said, if you have any issue with uh, your ZBook like, labs, because the grades are not populating the way you're supposed to, 
take a screenshot and let me know. Now, here, I want to show you this. This is very important, and I want you to pay attention to this. Decision branching, pseudocode, and flowchart. So, basically, what you, when, you, when we are writing our codes, sometimes we don't know how things are going to work. And one of the best things that we do is we do a pseudocode. Basically, pseudocode is like, like a step-by-step of how our language in a, in a, in a um, readable format is going to go. It's going to work. So, for instance, on the left side, you see it says, if it is sunny, you know, this is human reading um, words. I'm not, this is not like a programming code here. So, this is kind of, like, this is a pseudo code. If it is, if it is sunny, wear shorts and a t-shirt. So, I'm writing what I want my program to do. If it is raining, wear pants and grab an umbrella. So, I'm telling, I'm, I'm, I'm trying to, in a human way, to kind of process or write my, my, write my program, and then I'm going to go into like a flow chart to know how everything is going to work, and then I can write my code. This is a better way to understand how do you want your program to run, what do you want your programs to do, and if it doesn't use an interaction, et cetera, et cetera, you write it. And then you say, you know, um, if it is snowing, wear a big jacket and a boots. Else, wear whatever you want. So I'm saying basically what I want my program to do. Now in a flow chart, you see that now we're using basically the condition statement. Now we're going into similar, but now we're going to use visualization. There are people that they, lo that they love visual because that's the way they understand. So look, I have a start. Don't forget, every program has a start. So you need to start your program. And then if it is sunny, Right, this is this is the condition. If it is sunny, now I have a I have a boolean uh, input here. If it's false, I want you to do it is. If it is raining, it's the same thing I'm writing. If it is raining, it's a false. This is a false or true. So this is a yes or no. This is a one or zero. You have to be one or the other. So if it is raining and it, and it is true, then wear pants and, and grab an umbrella. But if it, if it is not, if it's false, so if it is Snowing, if it is true, wear a big jacket and boots. False, wear whatever you want. And if it is sunny and it is true, then wear shorts and t-shirts. And then what do you do? You end the program. So basically, I'm just doing in a flow chart the same thing I just wrote here. Okay, now you see that I'm using a lot of uh, conditioning statements and using the Boolean value. Yes. Or no, it's either true or false. If it's true, do this. If it's false, quick. Or you can have also multiple conditions like it's here. If it's false, okay. If it's false, then let me see if it is raining. If it's not raining, then let me see if, it's, if it is snowing. If it meets any of this, then do this. So this is the way you're going to be writing when you're doing your flow chart. You need to just tell me in your flow chart how your program is going to run. What is your program going to do? I'm going to know right away when you give me your flow chart because when I run your program, it must do what you say in your flow chart that your program is going to do. Okay? So I want you to keep that in mind. Please make the distinction of pseudocode and flow chart and decision branching. Decision branching is if it is false, do this. If it is true, do this. So make a decision based on the, the argument that I'm giving you. Okay? Or the input that you receive. You might be asking the user, hey, um, how is the day today? And the user might say, it is good. Oh, is it raining or, or, or it is sunny? And the, based, on the, based on the answer from the user, the input you receive, your program mind, then it's going to execute X and Y. Okay? So this is important for you uh, to know and to understand. So we have a whole bunch of, like, a lot of materials here. Please go over this and let me know if you have any questions. Okay? I want you just to go over that because I got something else I want to show you. Uh, the ZBook, once again, some of you having issue. Please, you have to do uh, the assignments. This is week three, so decision branching, you have to do all of this. You have to do all of this. You have to do the labs. Make sure you pass it. It's, it's, it's going to be it's questionable when you send me an assignment that is, is working perfect and you are failing your C book. It's like, well, how come this person is passing the program, is working fine, but the Z book is, not, is failing? So make sure that what you are sending me, I would say match with your ZBook assignment because 
otherwise I'm going to ask you a question or I might bring you, you know, online for you to show me what you just, what you submitted. And I'm going to ask you probably, hey, can you explain me how you actually did this? Because if your C-book I means you're failing your labs and your activities, but your assignment is like 100% correct, something is not clicking, something is not matching, and I need explanation for that. So before I move to the Z-book, that you know what you have to do, I want to go back to uh, module three, and I want to do something quick here. So remember that I mentioned the condition operator? So here there's a little, um, let me go back. Let me see if it's in here. Okay, so here's a little exercise. I want to make this clear. You say here that it says num, like number, which is a variable. It says equal, equal to five. And then you have valve equal, equal to 20. And then it says inside equal, equal, no. Outside equal, equal, no. If number is equal, equal five, and valve, ball is greater than 10 and inside is equal, equal to yes or outside is equal, equal to no, print the sun is out today, else print it's too cold to play. Now, why am I showing this? I'm showing this because I'm going to use my pie chart right here and I'm going to, I copy basically this over here in the back. I copied it to my pie chart, okay? I did that right now and I did it that, I did that on purpose because I want to show you something quick. So the reason I did it, it because I want to show you guys the importance of understanding the statements, the importance of knowing specifically how Python reads your statements and how easy it is to get some like syntax error. Okay, so I'm gonna in your pie chart, you're gonna copy this and you're gonna click like run. And then look, I got a whole bunch of errors. Okay, I got an error in here. And then you might ask, okay, why? Why this error? Why do you got this error? So the first thing is I need to look into what is the error telling me? Because when you read your error message, it's going to tell you basically what the problem is and then you can focus yourself into fixing that error message. So here it says that num is equal to five. Wait, hold on, let me, let me do something different, hold on. Let me, let me, it's supposed to be this. Let me just do this, this again. Let me copy this into my pie chart. Guys, this is life. So I can make mistakes. Let me just run it again. It's going to be the same error. It's just that I, I have something here that was not supposed to be there. So here in my pie chart, in my pie chart, my pie charm is saying um, that number equal, equal five, valve equal, equal 20. Now, I have to understand the difference between this. Num equal, equal five and num, I'm going to write it here. Num equal five. What is the difference between, I'm gonna put the same variable. What is the difference for you between the first and the last? Do you think they are the same? Are they the same? Do you think they are both the same? They are not the same. And this is where the tricky part comes. And, and this is where I'm getting this error message. If you see, it says inside equal equal no in line three right here. It says I got a syntax error in valid character. But when I read my message, when I'm looking into my program, I need to know what I'm actually writing and the meaning of this. So num equal equal five, when I do the two digits, basically what I'm doing there is I am comparing. This is a comparison operator. I am comparing the variable and num with the number five. Basically what I'm saying is num equal equal five. So it is num or number is number equal equal five? The answer is no, because I am comparing, they are not equal. If I put here five equal equal five, then yes, it's, it's the same. Or if I have another variable where I give the number, what I give this value, this value, and I can call it, then yes. But in this case, I'm saying I'm comparing the variable with the value, and they are not the same. So, the equal equal is a comparison operator and is used to check whether two expression give the same value. Okay, like num equal equal five. So equality check returns true if it succeed or it will say it will return false. So if I run this program, this is gonna be automatically no. It's gonna be false, it's, it's an issue here. The same thing will, is gonna happen with valve 20 equal equal 20 because valve is a variable 
and 20 is an integer. So I'm comparing a variable with an integer and they are not the same. So it is important to know that because the difference between this and this is that the top is comparing the variable with the, the, the integer. The second is giving the, uh, the variable the number five, okay? So the first one, the, I mean the num equal five, basically you are assigning the operator to the variable. So you saying that num, num equal to five, okay? You are not comparing that. So therefore, when I'm running the program here, it's giving me an error because the program is comparing this, comparing this operation. It seems num equal, equal five, and that is wrong. So what do I have to do? Well, the first thing is I need to remove that equal because what I want to do is I want to assign that number to the variable. That's the first thing I got to do. Then what, what do I do after that? Well, I re, I'm going to rerun it again and see if I have any error. Okay, it's still giving me an error message. So what do I have to do now? Well, I need to figure it out if what I have here is the same too. Because here I am doing what? If you notice, I am comparing again. So this is an issue here. I am comparing inside with no. So that's going to give me another error. So I need to remove that equal equal because that's going to be an issue. So what do I do now? Then I'm going to rerun it again. And it's still saying the same thing. Why am I having the same issue again? Well, we're going to have the same issue again because this like quote here are not supposed to be there. Those are not supposed to be those quote. I'm not quoting them. I need to put, basically, the quotation is different. It's a, it's a, it's, it's a quote. Basically, what I'm saying, this is a string. I want those strings to be printed the way they are. Those are strings. I need to put in quote. But the one I was using was not. So, um, so be careful when you copy this because is Python is going to take it as a different sign, not as an actual quote. So use, you need to delete it probably and use the right, the right quote for this. Let me rewrite it again. So I'm having the same issue here. It's the same problem I'm having. Look, it's taking this like quote as a different integer. So make sure that you delete it, okay? Because otherwise Python is gonna think it's something different. So I'm going to rewrite this again to run it. So now it is, it is working. You see, if I keep it equal, equal, it's not going to run. Now what it says here is, if number is equal, equal to five, remember I assigned this number five to num, number or to num, and I assign 20 to, to valve. So in this case, I'm actually correct because it's saying if that num here is equal to five, which it is, and valve is greater than 10, which it is because it's 20, and inside is equal to yes, inside in this case is equal to no, okay? or no, or, or, or outside is equal to no. So this is incorrect, but remember, you have the or. The condition says or, it's either or. So this is incorrect, but this is correct. Because that is correct, then I want you to print, the sun is out today, right here. The sun is out today. Otherwise, you should print then, it's too cold to play. So please be careful and remember the indexing. If I move that index over here, and if I move it over here, let's see what happens. Python will give me an error. Why? Because Python needs indexing, specifically when you're running an if statement. So you need to make sure you have the indexing, okay? Now the program is running. So please pay full attention to this because some of you are reaching out to me having this issue in your um, ZBook. And when I review it, what I'm noticing is that some of you are not doing the indexing, or some of you are not are not um, declaring the right variable, or are using like lowercase, and then and then you guys are calling out in, in, in uppercase. So Python is very sensitive with that. Make sure that you know what you're doing and review your code before you finish. Provide feedback to your peers. Make sure you do your assignment on time, and let me know if you have any question. Enjoy week three. We have five more weeks to go. Keep it up. Keep pressing down. You got this. Have a good one.